Looking to the sea Crowds of people wait for me Seagulls scavenge Still ice cream The worries vanish Within my dreams
America. <laughs> it's Sadie. very nice to see your people here in my country. Thank you. Oh, Girls thank welcome you. to nice you. To your <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Boom, shaka laka boom boom boom. Gyal you cause confusion when you walk inna the room. Boom, shaka laka boom boom boom. Gyal you cause confusion when you walk inna the room. Boom, shaka laka boom boom boom. Gyal you cause confusion when you walk inna the room. Boom, shaka laka boom boom boom. Gyal you cause confusion when you walk inna the room. through Samoa was really interesting. There's always kids that were super stoked. They were only really young, but they had like machetes and they're always super proud of their land and they're always happy and hugging each other and just have these big smiles. I mean, they don't have anything much, but they're always so stoked and happy just, just to see tourists or anything. They'd run alongside the van and call out your name and just like we stopped at a little spot on Savai and um, I was hanging out with a few of the kids and you know, they ask them, what's your name and what do you do and everything. And then you drive away and they're all chasing the car, you know, saying, hey, it's Rear, and waving to you and calling you out.
one, I just remember this one day in Samoa where like, we surfed out in front of the camp and it wasn't so good, it was kind of sloppy and then, so we just, we all got in the boat and we were just searching for waves, it was just like full on search. And there was this tiny little island just out in the middle of the ocean and we, we came around in the boat and all of a sudden we just seen left just peeling off and nobody out. And I just like grabbed my board and was just like, yeah, it was just like, it was like the best day ever and just surfed for hours, broke my board, came in, grabbed another one, went back out, and I was so bummed because the tide changed and we had to leave, otherwise we wouldn't be able to get home because it would have been too shallow. But, oh, if I could have, I would have stayed there all day. I never wanted to leave.
yeah, we've got to remember all the women that came before us because if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing now, especially with the CT tour and stuff like that. The girls are making money and money off their sponsors and that sort of thing. If it wasn't for the girls, you know, Pam used to, they used to travel around the world for a $500 total prize money and stuff like that, the stupid stuff like that. And they were just like so into it, that's, you know, that's what they loved and they didn't care. I just wanted to do it, so if it wasn't for them, you know, we wouldn't be anywhere, and so you, you got to appreciate what they did for us. Rel, she was almost words can't describe what Rel was like. She uh, she was everything to all the children of Hawaii. She she inspired everyone and did everything she could to help for the future of surfing. Um, and she was one of the most graceful, greatest women surfers there were. Well, I think Rel taught me not only to um, love my sport and um, the expression of surfing in the water um, and to share that with people but she also taught me that you know it's, it's important to give back to, to the kids. I've always wanted to do that but I think um, it's made me want to do that more because we have to carry on what Rel started. I'm a woman. I'm a There's tons of women that surf on the Gold Coast. Um, it's a beautiful place. It's sunny, you know. Gold Coast says it all. And there's great waves everywhere. Um, gosh, I was amazed how many women surf there. It's just like everywhere you look, there's girls out everywhere, you know, having fun and laughing and, you know, in board shorts and bathing suits and, you know, playful bright boards. And I don't know, it's just got such a, a, a neat feel to it, you know.
Lane Beachley um, is surfing fantastic at the moment and I've just, I think everyone knew last year at the end of the year that she'd been putting in so much hard work and dedication and um, determination because she's overcome so many things and she's realised that she had the potential to perform um, to her best and become a world champion and she just did it and like I, I mean I think everyone had a feeling she would do it and and um, I'm, I just feel like it's a really good thing to relate to. A lot of people should be able to look at Lane and go, wow, she was uncertain about herself and uncertain that she would perform um, like as well enough, good enough to be a world champion. And then she realised she could be and she became one. And it's sort of like a very simple little lesson, but it's a lot of people don't often get it. And I think, yeah, she's been a really good role model in that fact as well. Like, She's, she's really been a good impression on swimming surfing. It's all about the things you down. The girl said to me, face and this they go. Boom, boom. She does this the much. She give me loving. So she dip on me mind. Up, down, down, down. Still can't find like we really winkle and running through the town. Upstairs, downstairs, round and round. Knocking on the window, baby, come up. So take it from the top of give me loving on slow. Lion, she's the most determined person I've ever met, I think. You know, she taught me a lot of things. She's like, you know, she, she grew up in the same beach as Pam, so she got that the full hassle, competitive thing happening. So she's, you know, she's deserved, she's deserved the, the title. She's been that close. And, you know, she charges out Sunset, you know, Mrs. Sunset. So, she's, you know, she's up there. Hey, remember that trip we took to Cabo with Lisa? <laughs> hey, remember that? That was really wet. You have black stuff by your teeth right there. It's Focus really on. <laughs> <laughs> right there, yeah. Get it. Okay, got it. Cabo was so much fun. It's still in your tooth. <laughs> Cabo was so much fun, it's still in your tooth. <laughs> remember that weekend when the. <laughs> This surf is really good and I probably fly down. <laughs> yeah, you're surfing really good. That was 
very nice. Okay, okay. okay. You is the <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
I think J Bay is the best wave in the whole world. I had like the best time ever at J Bay. I don't like cold water that much, but the like, cold water is nothing at J Bay. I mean, you don't even think about the cold water. The waves are so perfect. So, and I'm from Hawaii, so that was that goes to show how good the waves are. I mean. Sing. Homeless, homeless. Moonlight sleeping on a midnight lay. Homeless, homeless. The moonlight sleeping on a midnight lay. And we are homeless. We are homeless. The moonlight sleeping on a midnight lay. South Africa, <laughs> it's another one of my favourite places. Um, every year we go there, it's not only just the great waves, even though it's cold, you know, you surf perfect waves. Um, you get to go on safaris and hang out with the girls and we went to Shawari again this year. And It was neat just to be with all the girls to experience a, such a different culture than what we're used to to seeing and um, to be able to see these beautiful animals out in the open where it, usually if we go to a zoo in America they're just in cage you know you, you can't even see them roam free but they're they're in their own wildlife their own habitat so it's really neat to see the way they are time we saw all the animals and um, just had a really fun day we were videoing and laughing and taking photos and we just got to see really close you know the elephants and just we had a really good group of girls with us this little um, Sophia from Peru and then there was like Pam and it was like every all these different generations but we we're all together and just having fun and checking out the animals and um, it was like a little it was a break day for the Conair so it was just like 
a good little getaway from the Con Air scene and it was just super beautiful and fun and we had a big feast for lunch and it was really fun, everyone was laughing, having fun all day and just checking out so much different stuff, it was really good. It's like you're almost in another little world, like you're surfing in a contest, you know, a contest site and then you drive a couple of hours away and there's just nothing, it's just landscape and you're driving through and you're looking at huge elephants and, or, you know, lions and stuff like that. So it's, it's really like, I don't know, you, you get a lot of knowledge from driving around and the guy's telling you about all the different stuff and the different animals and, the, you know, this sort of spring box, this and, you know. So apart from learning a lot, we all, you know, spent quality time, had a really good time and you're in the country but then you're on the beach as well and there's just, there's, there's a great atmosphere the whole time, it's really cool. I woke up this one morning, like the second day we were there, and the winds were just howling at night. And we woke up and it was like six feet with some eight foot sets, and it was just perfect. And we just ran down for a surf, and it was like the most beautiful sight I've ever seen, just perfect six foot waves just coming through from all the way from super tubes to impossible. It was just like, you could ride it all the way, just the fastest wave you've ever seen in your life. Watch touch of evil without warning I thought about you ugly now Black and violent and out there waiting I thought about you ugly now And what have you done by corruption? And what have you done by betraying? Everything I've ever dreamed
big guy saw an animal that is uh, dead and I'm not even dead. He's got a big wound in his neck, he's still fine. Anything? Oh, I'm going to go fast when he's back there. Oh boy. Oh, The barrel queen. <laughs> Rochelle, she's done so much for surfing, it's unbelievable. You know, if it wasn't for Rochelle, I don't think a lot of the stuff that's going on right now would be happening. And she's she's someone I look up to just for what she's done and her surfing and everything. Michelle Ballard, I think, is, I honestly think she's like, kind of like the next girl. She really, she cares so much about everything around her, about the women surfing and the, the movement and where it's going in the future that sometimes she just gets all wrapped up around and she gets, it kind of just takes over her and she just gets really emotional. I can't even 
even explain how much she loves surfing and she's like the greatest barrel rider ever. She like can get barreled on any wave and go forever and like the little five foot frame of her can go out at like six to eight foot back door and just get pitted and then she'll just be laughing. She'll go over the falls and she'll get work and go back out and get like the best barrel of her life. Or I would love to be like that. Lisa's just another one of the legends, you know. It's like hold her in the highest regard just because of what she's done for women surfing, you know. Lisa has a very fluid, powerful style. She's graceful. Um, her style is beautiful. It's um, flashy at the same time when she wants it to be. Um, she can be real fluid going down the line, then all of a sudden she'll just come out with this move and just blow your mind. You know, it's real, um, not necessarily spontaneous but um, just real smooth, and then she'll just throw out something super radical, you know, and just go, oh, that was so sick. You know, it's not something where it's real jerky or anything like that. So, you know, she's, she's the epitome of, of graceful, powerful, radical surfer. <laughs> When I was younger, uh, Lisa Anderson inspired me more than anyone. I used to watch her MTV sports segment she did every single day before I went surfing and I just had posters of her all over my wall and um, I used to just want to be just like her. It was She's so radical and so smooth and kind of always charging and always trying to be the most radical female surfer out there so that really inspired me a lot.
No plan? Going for a surf and then going shopping. Not going to surf the new shit out here. Can you say gossip together? Take over in Makaha. We had the best photo this one time from Bells, and it was like the raddest photo of all of us, and your stupid boob was showing. So we had to, it ruined the photo. We had to cut it. We are so bummed. You're just all, ah, like that, and everybody's smiling. Well, and just all, a sense of freedom, right? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. You have always been an exhibitionist. <laughs> That's not changed. Exhibitionist. Did you start it yet? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God! Oh, my God. <laughs>
I don't know. It's like it's it's so fun to just be able to just goof off and just act like a dork sometimes, you know. And um, I don't know. It's like we're always giggling out in the water and having fun, and and um, you know at the same time that we're pushing pushing it. <laughs> pushing. <laughs> oh my god! At the same time that we're pushing each other. <laughs> I won't say that word! The other thing I love about the ocean is just being in the ocean every day and sitting there. You know, some, some days there's no waves at all and I'll be sitting in the water and there might be a bird dive down and get a fish or a dolphin going by. It's just so nice to be in the water all the time. If I'm not surfing, I'm swimming or I'm fishing. And, you know, it's a lifestyle that you become addicted to the water. Without the water, I feel like I'll die. You know, I can go inland for two weeks and after two weeks, that's enough. I have to get back to the ocean. So, you know, it's a real big part of my life where I'm always wet somewhere or another. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that cracked me up. I could just hear, feel it coming a little. <laughs> Good. <laughs> 